Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the Minister of Finance, does he stand by his statement in January this year that, quote, as New Zealand emerges from recession, the government's focus has firmly shifted towards significantly lifting our economic performance? The Honourable Bill English. Mr. Speaker, uh, yes, that is certainly the case. And the accumulating evidence is that uh, this economy needs significant structural renovation, and that is what this government is setting out to achieve. The Honourable David Cunliffe. Uh, Mr Speaker, does the Minister accept Statistics New Zealand data showing that New Zealanders on the median wage are worse off by at least $9 a week, while at the same time prices have increased by almost 2 per cent? The Honourable Bill uh, Mr Speaker, no, that's not what those numbers tell them. And in any case, uh, as we've discussed in this House uh, for quite some time recently, uh, real wages are rising. If, Labor believe, if the Labor Party believes the increase in GST is the wrong policy, then it should campaign to axe the tax, as Mr Gough promised some time ago, and to take back the income tax cuts that New Zealanders are now enjoying. The Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr Speaker, why did he claim to the House on August 19th that incomes had increased by 8.7 per cent when Statistics New Zealand clearly shows median incomes are going backwards for the first time since 1998? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, the member is but trying to be tricky with the different statistical series. The fact is that the debate in the House has, been, has used the uh, underlying wage numbers that all governments have employed for calculating national superannuation, uh, and that is the uh, average after-tax ordinary time weekly wage. Uh, but the member, can, the member, if he doesn't like the policy of the increase in GST and the cut in income tax, can campaign to roll back both the GST increase and the income tax cuts. And so far, he hasn't done that. Craig Foss. Mr Speaker. Craig Foss. Supplementary to the Minister. What steps has the government taken to lift New Zealand's economic growth? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, we've had to take a large number of steps because the previous government did so much damage to the basic settings of this economy. We've reformed the tax system uh, and those across the board income tax cuts were put in place uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we've helped reduce inflation and keep interest rates low, increased real take-home pay, taken steps to get de government debt under control, reprioritised $4 billion of low-quality spending uh, in the back office of government into the frontline areas in education, health and law and order, introduced national standards in schools, cut red tape in a whole range of areas, including making it easier for businesses to hire new workers, we have invested billions in infrastructure, uh, such as broadband, uh, electri the electricity grid uh, and roads and schools, and these, this has helped to support thousands of jobs during a recession. The Honourable David Cunliffe. Minister, given, given to the Minister, given that he said that the government inherited an economy that was, quote, in good shape, and that he's taken all those steps, why is it that the latest New Zealand Institute of Economic Research quarterly business activity data shows manufacturing crashing, that GDP stats are extremely weak, that Fitch Ratings has noted household savings are falling further? And if all this is true, exactly what part of his rebalanced recovery is still on track? The Honourable Bill English. Well, uh, Mr Speaker, all of it. And uh, the member, the reason... If there is any reason why the recovery is slower, it is because households are adjusting more quickly than we expected. That is, they're being more careful with their spending and the savings, uh, they are increasing their savings and paying off their debt. That is an adjustment that needs to occur in New Zealand. And if it means in the shorter term lower business confidence, it will mean in the longer term a better balanced economy. Honourable David Cundiff. Mr Speaker, does he agree with Statistics New Zealand that the 1.7 per cent decline in the median wage, quote, continues a decline in annual wage growth over the past 15 months? 
And if so, how can his government claim to be catching up with Australia? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, I think, it, I think everyone, who's, uh, everyone knows that there's been a decline in wage growth. Wage increases have been relatively small, whether they're in the private sector or the public sector, and that reflects the community's broad understanding of the recession that we're in. Of course it will require significant growth to close the gap with Australia, and the Government is taking a three- to five-year view about the structural changes that are required to undo the damage his Government did and to lift our growth rates, and we intend to persist with that programme regardless of how the economy performs quarter to quarter. Question number 10, Melissa Lee. 